in July 1938, a brand new British steam locomotive set out on a top secret mission fitted with cutting-edge technology and designed by one of the world's most iconic locomotive engineers, she had one goal, to reclaim the prestigious speed record for steam locomotives. Just two years earlier, in 1946, the Germans had shattered the previous British record by over 10 miles an hour. It was a staggering achievement, a propaganda goldmine for the Nazi regime, and a humiliating blow to British pride. For nearly 150 years, Britain had otherwise been a leader in the development of steam locomotives. It was British mining engineer Richard Treverwick who invented the steam locomotive in 1804. The German record seemed to further solidify what was already the general consensus at the time. The once Great Britain was in decline. By 1945, the nation was still reeling from the aftershocks of the Great Depression. Heavy industry had slowed to a crawl and unemployment soared. Meanwhile, Germany's economy was surging forward. By 1945, Adolf Hitler had been in power for two years, and the Nazi regime was pouring massive resources into national infrastructure and military expansion. German engineering was being held up as a symbol of renewed strength, fast, modern and unstoppable. The man who restored the nation's honor by building the world's fastest steam locomotive was named Nigel Gressley. Gressley was born in Edinburgh in 1876 and was expected to follow in his father's secure footsteps as a clergyman. But that was not to be. Young Nigel was far more interested in machines and technical drawings. At 17, he began an apprenticeship at the locomotive factory. After completing his training, he worked in an office that designed locomotives. Its evident talent for engineering quickly propelled him up the career ladder. By the age of 35, he held the title of chief mechanical engineer at a major British railway company. Among the many important technological advances spearheaded by Nigel was replacing the raised center section with windows and passenger carriage roofs with elliptical roofs that reduced air resistance. To generate more power, he designed locomotives with three cylinders instead of two, which was otherwise the standard at the time. Two-cylinder locomotives created a rocking motion as the pistons pushed from side to side, causing uneven movement and track wear. Gressley's brilliant solution was to add a third cylinder centrally placed between the wheels. This not only gave more power, but also balanced the motions of the pistons increasing horsepower and reducing wear on the tracks. Since the early 1920s, Gressley had focused on improving a class of steam locomotives known as specifics. Characterized by their wheel arrangement, two smaller guiding wheels at the front, three large driving wheel sets in the middle and a smaller trailing wheel set under the cab. Gressley first developed an A1 Pacific, followed by an improved A3 Pacific. Both powerful locomotives, however, both the A1 and A3 models resemble the steam locomotives of the 1800s, with their elongated cylindrical boilers and relatively flat fronts. A radical new design was needed to achieve higher speeds and greater efficiency. Inspiration for the new A4 models came from the world of race cars. In 1923, Italian car designer Ettore Borghetti unveiled a sleek aerodynamic race car. Gressley incorporated similar streamlining into his next generation of locomotives. 
and in 1945, the first streamlined A4 was finished, the Silver Link. With its sleek aerodynamic design, it looked like something straight out of the future. And with its powerful engine, the Silver Link managed to reach a top speed of just over 112 miles per hour, breaking all previous UK speed records. However, just a year later, the Germans responded with their own engineering marvel. In 1936, Borsig unveiled a brand new, sleek locomotive with the catchy name of BR05002. The train reached a staggering 124.5 miles per hour, seizing the world record. The German propaganda victory made headlines in Britain, triggering a national outcry to reclaim the title. Railway companies began competing to hit ever higher speeds, that the best they could achieve was around 113 miles per hour, still short of the German mark. For Nigel, winning back the record became an obsession and in 1938, he unveiled the A4 Mallard, equipped with every innovation Gressley and his team could throw at her. The boiler pressure was increased from 220 to 250 psi, and the steam pipes were reshaped internally to reduce resistance and improve flow. Her streamlined casing was carefully designed to guide airflow over the top, rather than long designs. Just like Bugatti's race cars, coal tenders and carriages were also given elliptical roofs to cut drag. Mallard's triple cylinder engine provided smoother and more powerful acceleration rather than traditional designs. By Sunday, July 3rd, 1938, Mallard had been tested, tuned and made ready. She departed from Barkston, just north of Grantham, on the East Coast Main Line, pulling a special train with a dynamometer car and several passenger coaches. Because of track work near Grantham, she had to hold back initially, but after passing Grantham Station, she opened the throttle wide. The train surged forward, reaching 85 miles per hour, then 116 miles per hour, breaking the British record. Still not enough, the German benchmark loomed ahead. Approaching the town of Essendine, the driver knew he'd soon need to break down to avoid derailment. But just before that, as the train flew past Little Bytham, the speedometer ticked past 123 miles per hour, and then, for just a few seconds, Mallard reached 126 miles per hour, finally beating the German world record. The record caused a national sensation, but many believed Mallard could have gone even faster. The distance from Grantham to Essendon, just 24 kilometers, meant there was limited room to reach full speed. Had she been allowed to pass through Grantham at over 100 kilometers an hour, some people believe Mallard might have reached 130 miles per hour or more. Tragically, Nigel Gressley was too ill to witness the record-breaking run. His health declined in the following years, and he passed away on April 5, 1941. In addition to Mallard, Gressley was also responsible for the Silver Jubilee and perhaps the most famous steel locomotive of all time, the Flying Scotsman. Mallard was retired in 1963. By then, it had covered around 1.4 million miles on the British Railways.